Fighters, make ready. Lay on. The SCA Steel Fighting Experiment is brand new. It's exciting. I'm sure many of us are still uncertain if we'd even want to participate in it or just understand how it works. So watch this duel right here. Then I'm going to break down so many things for you. We'll watch this duel again later in the video and you'll totally understand everything you see going on right now. Here's a few seconds about my background, just so you know what might qualify me to make a video like this. I started out as a fighter in the Armored Combat League. I still participate in it as much as I can. I was introduced to the SCA through some teammates and friends out here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and I can tell you two things. That the SCA steel fighting format is very safe, and secondly, that it takes a little bit more skill to win a one-on-one -on -one duel in the SCA format than it does in the Armored Combat League. So without any further ado, let's get to the explanation of the steel fighting experiment in the SCA. The list field shall be marked on the ground with paint or chalk. And the rules currently state that the list field must be at least 20 feet by 20 feet. I've experienced and seen that 20 by 20 is a plentiful amount of square footage to conduct a proper duel. A safety zone of 10 feet shall extend out in all areas where spectators are allowed. The safety zone is not optional, and it also states that a rope or rail boundary not less than 3 feet high shall be used. Here is an element of the list which is not yet defined or mentioned in the rulebook. There are two lines in the center of the list where the fighters will start from, from the command lay on, and when the duel is over they will return here while the scores are counted. Currently there are no rules stating how far apart these lines shall be. I think 6 feet is a great number for a few reasons. First, it allows the judges to clearly visualize the combatant that they're focusing on at the beginning and the end of each duel. Secondly, 6 feet apart means no one is going to get hit immediately as soon as the duel starts. One or both fighters must advance to create engagement. We just watched two combatants begin the duel at the lines. Now let's watch at the end of the duel when the combatants recollect at the lines. I stated that SCA steel fighting is very safe, and I wasn't joking. The boundaries of the list are painted on the ground so there's nothing for a fighter to accidentally stumble and fall over if they approach the edge of the list. There's no physical rail or boundary at the edge of the list, which removes any kind of injuries from a fighter falling into it by accident, being pushed into it during a clinch, and it eliminates the anvil effect, which is basically having your body pressed up against a solid surface and being hit by a weapon. A lot more chance for injury if something like that would occur. As you'll see in here in this clip, it's been proven effective that when combatants approach the boundary of the list, they're issued a verbal warning so they may be alerted and fight their way back towards the center. But keep in mind that the rules do state the marshals stop the fight as the combatants approach the defined boundary. Armor, weapon, and shield standards is really in-depth and needs to be covered in a separate video, but I'll point out a few things you might need to know before just jumping into the SCA steel fighting. Helms shall be of welded or riveted construction with a minimum of 12 gauge mild steel or equivalent for stainless or spring steel. You're required to have a chin strap and padding. The opening shall not be more than 3 quarters of an inch by one and a half inches or have an open area not to exceed one and an eighth square inches. However, there's an exception that combatants may use shatterproof glasses where the helm does not meet those requirements of the openings, but that is also discretion of the inspecting marshal. 
You must have hip protection and shin protection. Finger gauntlets are a no-no, unless they're behind a shield or inside a basket. Of course, swords need lanyards. I did notice that swords may have basket hilts. I've never seen that before for a steel sword, but that's interesting to know. Cross guards will not protrude more than 35 millimeters past the gauntlet. And that's a rule that I could see changing here. Um, I know I've heard a couple guys talking about it. When you're in those clinches, it's an accident. You put a cross guard through somebody's visor. I've actually done it one time on accident in the Armored Combat League. Um, I would not be surprised if they modify that rule here in the future. So expect that you may have to shave down your cross guard. Or you could just do it preemptively to try and prevent injuring somebody else when you're up close and personal in a longsword duel. Finally, the following weapons are prohibited. Weapons with a tip less than 20 millimeters. No axes, no maces, no pole arms, and sadly, no katanas. That would be cool though if we could use katanas. It's time to look at the ministry of the lists. Of course, we'll start with our two combatants. We're going to have our marshal in charge. He's responsible for overseeing all the fighting activities, resolving appeals, ensuring that everything adheres to the standards. We will have a field marshal. Their sole responsibility is the safety of the list, combatants and judges. They're not concerned at all about counting blows. They're just observing fighters for equipment integrity and safe behavior. They're going to be the ones that are going to issue warnings or any penalties. Penalties that a field marshal might need to consider are dropping a weapon. That will result in a three point penalty. Not engaging in combat or actively denying engagement for a period of time as a two point penalty. Voluntarily stepping out of the list area, that's a two-point penalty. Failure to obey commands of the field marshal, three-point penalty. Or, of course, any conduct unbecoming of a competitor in the list, that's also a three-point penalty. A special note should be made that the marshals are allowed to be competitors. There will be four judges, two per combatant, and they are placed opposite of each other on the corners of the list. As you can see in this video, the judge on the right shoes walking up and down alongside the list, which is permitted. The judges, they are required to use clickers to count blows, and they need to have clear line of sight of their fighter so that they can count accurately, so this is allowed. At the conclusion of the bout, the judge must return to their corner when scores will be recorded. Judges are not permitted to talk with each other until the scores have been recorded. There are many different tournament styles, so if needed, a time person will be present to keep track of the timed bout. If you're authorized to fight Rattan in the SCA, you already know the targeting area. It is the same. What constitutes a valid blow that the judges are looking for in the SCA steel fighting experiment? In the beginning of the video, I mentioned that it takes a little bit more skill to win a duel in the SCA compared to some of the other steel fighting communities. That is for this first valid point. Three joints must be employed in the delivery of the blow. In many other communities, you do not need the three joints to land a successful hit. Otherwise, valid blows Longsword blows require both hands on the grip to be scored, and keep in mind there's no half-sorting techniques allowed. A valid blow will be considered a cut, unimpeded, or the intent of the blow not significantly diminished by defensive action striking only upon the edge of the sword. The blow is thrown with a similar technique as would have been used to cause injury, but with a force that is deemed acceptable for sports competition. Judges are required to use clickers, and during each fight, they click once for each blow landed on the fighter that they are watching. That's what may appear confusing to someone just passing by. When the marshal puts his hand on the fighter's head at the end of the bout, that number is how many times they got hit, not how many times they hit the other person. Judges are trained not to count noise. Sight is the determining factor in judging valid blows. And lastly, take note that there's no stabbing or thrusting allowed in the steel fighting experiment. A failure of any piece of equipment immediately stops the combat. You are allowed one minute to repair your equipment. Combatants are advised to use caution when striking vital areas of the body. A hold may be called by anyone in or around the list or even spectators. So I hope this video has been helpful. I believe I covered everything I wanted to to introduce everyone to the steel fighting experiment in the SCA. Remember it is an experiment. This is still the beta version of steel. So things may change. Leave a like if I helped you out. Share the video. Drop a comment below so we can keep in touch because as this is an experiment, things may change and we'll all stay on the same page if we keep the conversation going. I believe the biggest difference between what we're used to in the SCA and the steel fighting format is that now we're not recognizing blows or admitting we've been hit. We're leaving that up to a third party, which is a judge. 
uh, determining how many times you've hit someone else or been hit yourself. But if you're feeling frisky, the rule book does say that combatants may recognize a blow by saying good, and the judges will immediately add that blow to their tally. You may or may not want to call good depending on how well you're doing in that bout. About so far, an average has been lasting about 30 seconds. Remember though, this is not the only tournament style that we're using. You can also have a race to a certain amount of blows, like 5 or 10, first to 5 or 10. You can have a gallery where the winner is actually determined by a segment of the populace attending, like all the ladies, your peers, the children, etc. You can even have a set number of blows. Each person is allowed to swing 20 times and whoever hits each other the most times out of that wins. If you run out of blows, you can only defend yourself the rest of the time. It's a lot of fun. I really encourage people to check it out. Now are you ready for a challenge? Remember in the beginning of the video I said that we we're going to watch that duel again at the end. And then we're going to see how well you do. Now that you've watched this tutorial, can you score or even understand the fight just like the judges did? I bet you can. So check it out right here. Remember everybody out there, be safe and we'll catch you in the next video. Judges right. for this fight are ready. Judges for this fight are ready. Do I need to move around? As, as long as you're comfortable yeah. with where you are. Fighters, make ready. <laughs> Lay on. Five. Five. Okay. Good. Great job, man. Good job. Thank you. Woo! Thank you.